Good morning. On behalf of California State Parks for its home learning program, welcome to Storytime at Hearst Castle. Aren't those views gorgeous? Today's featured story is A Year Around the Oak, the, A Year Around the Great Oak by Gerda Mueller. And in the story today, a brother and sister, Benjamin and Anna, they live in the city and they go to visit one of their cousins by the name of Robin. Robin lives in the countryside and the countryside like here at San Simeon has trees in it. And there's one particular tree, Robin's favorite tree that she shares with her cousins, Anna and Benjamin. And it is an oak tree. And we are going to read our story first thing this morning and then talk about the love that William Randolph Hearst had here up at San Simeon and incorporate that into our story along with a very old historic tree as well. So once again, A Year Around the Great Oak by Gerda Mueller. And I'm going to pull in a little closer to my friend Anthony, who is helping me with the camera today, and we will get our story going. Benjamin and Anna were visiting their cousin Robin and his parents, Uncle John and Aunt Beth, for the autumn school break. Uncle John was a forester, and their house was right on the edge of the forest. Can we follow the path into the trees, asked Benjamin. Why don't you explore the house this evening, said Uncle John, and I'll take you into the forest tomorrow morning and show you a special tree, said Robin. It's nearly 300 years old and it's a good place to build a den. The next day, the three children set out right after breakfast. They knew to stay on the paths and keep together so that they wouldn't get lost. All the autumn leaves were turning yellow, red, and brown. Robin's special tree was a huge, great oak. 300 years is a long time, he said. People don't usually live much longer than 100 years, and this tree has been growing for three times as long. Robin, Benjamin, and Anna found a good spot near the tree and built a den using sticks and leaves. The den was a great place to hide and watch birds and animals. They saw a hawk chasing a pigeon away and squirrels in the great oak collecting acorns for winter. The next day was misty. Uncle John planted an apple tree in the garden and Anna helped. She looked forward to eating its juicy apples on future visits. In the afternoon, the children collected mushrooms in the forest. Robin knew which ones were safe to eat and which ones were poisonous. They took a full basket back to the house for dinner. Their autumn break was at an end and that evening, Benjamin and Anna returned to the city. The next time they visited, it was winter. Benjamin loved the snow. He went skiing through the woods with Robin. Even without its leaves, the great oak provided shelter for birds and animals. Perhaps the owls would nest here in the spring. Uncle John took Benjamin with him to see the foresters working. Winter was a busy time for them. They were measuring the tree 
trunks to see how much they had grown since last winter and deciding which trees to cut down for timber that year. In spring, Benjamin and Anna came to visit again. The oak had new leaves and the forest was a beautiful pale green. There were bluebells and catkins and the cuckoo called cuckoo, cuckoo. Robin found badger footprints by the pond. If we come back at night, we might see them drinking here, he said. Uncle John agreed that they would go badger watching. One fine evening, they walked to the great oak. On the way, they saw a leveret, a baby hare, and then two fawns. They knew to stay back, keeping quiet and still so they didn't scare the animals. Birds like woodcocks were finding their last food for the day. And when the children reached the pond, a fox was there drinking. As night fell, the fawns came past with their mother. The children and Uncle John watched them as they waited quietly by the great oak. And finally, late in the evening, the badgers came. They snuffled in the grass, munching whatever they found, snails, insects, mice, and fallen berries, and lapped water from the pond. The next night, Benjamin felt sad because they'd soon have to go home. And he knew it wasn't safe to go into the forest on his own, but he really wanted to visit the great oak one more time. He climbed onto a low branch of the oak and watched the owl for a while. And while was this the owl family he had seen here in winter, now they had owlets. Then he heard a loud noise crashing through the forest. It came closer. A family of wild boars appeared. Benjamin stayed very still in the tree while they drank from the pond and he knew they could be dangerous. But the boars didn't leave. The piglets were too happy playing. Benjamin's legs and arms got stiff and tired. I need to climb down, but it's not safe, he thought to himself. Stuck in the tree, Benjamin could see little lights dancing in the dark air. They were fireflies. Then there was another stronger, steadier light, a flashlight. Uncle John and Robin had come searching for him. Their heavy footsteps scared off the playful boars. Benjamin was very relieved to climb down at last. Uncle John told Benjamin that he shouldn't have gone out on his own, but he understood why Benjamin felt sad. I'm sorry you have to go home too, he said but the forest will still be here when you come back in the summer. Yes, said Robin, next time let's have a party for the tree. It kept you safe, just like it shelters birds and animals. Yes, a party for the great oak. Benjamin and Anna came back at the end of summer. 
Robin invited all the children who lived near the forest to come for a delicious picnic and they decorated the tree. Robin told everyone how this great big oak grew 300 years ago from a tiny acorn and about all the birds and animals it had helped since then. And me, said Benjamin, thank you, great oak. Happy birthday. And that is the end of our story. All right. So from here, what I would like to do, my friend Anthony, if you can take in the landscape once again here, California has long been blessed with rolling hills and mountains, its valleys filled with a variety of oak trees, not only throughout the state of California, but also right here in this very location of San Simeon, California. Now today we will be going on a photo walk again, taking in some photographs of uh, Mr. Hurst when he was a child. And we will start with the first photograph of his dad, George Hurst. Stay with us as we transition to the photos. And stay with us there, there we go. So on the left circle, you have George Hurst. That is William Randolph Hearst's father. He bought the original 48,000 acres of land here in the San Simeon area. The rancho was called Pedra Blanca Rancho. And then he um, purchased more land as he could and expanded that land that he owned and George Hurst along with Phoebe Hurst which is in the second circle there along with uh, William Randolph which is the small baby that you see in that picture um, they would come here to San Simeon and they would camp out it was their place to retreat and their place to vacation and the, uh, George Hurst purchased the land in 1865. Now in this photograph, William Randolph is actually an infant and he was, William Randolph was about two years old when his dad purchased this land and they began coming up here for camping trips. Now we're gonna transition to the next slide. As a young boy, William grew up on the ranch alongside his mother and father, and together they camped out, rode horses, explored the hillsides, their views, found swimming holes and creeks filled with fish. Now, George or William Randolph Hearst is not a young boy in this picture, but he is a grown man. And he learned how to ride alongside his father and friends of his father. And he became quite an accomplished, good horseman. Um, and this lifestyle, this ranch lifestyle on the countryside in San Simeon, he shared it with his own family. He eventually got married to his wife, Millicent. They had five sons together and they would come up here and camp as well. Um, he loved this land so much. He was quite sentimental about it. And while on a camping trip with his wife and children, um, he wrote a letter to his mother. And I'm gonna switch the, to the next slide here. His mother, Phoebe Apperson Hurst. 
And he said to her in this letter, I love this ranch. It's wonderful. I love the sea. I love the mountains and the hollows in the hills and the shady places in the creeks and the fine old oaks and even the hot brushy hillsides full of quail and canyons full of deer. It's a wonderful place. I would rather spend a month here than any place in the world. And if you look at that picture with the landscape, with the deer underneath it, those are some of the very views that William Randolph Hearst fell in love with growing up as a child throughout his uh, adult lifetime. And he became very sentimentally attached to the landscape here at San Simeon. Uh, he fell in love with it, like he wrote in that letter to his mother. And um, of course, his father passed away first, and then his mother passed away. When she passed away, he inherited the land here at San Simeon, and he decided that he wanted to build a little something up here and he needed an architect. So he hired Julia Morgan to help build and design a house in this rural rustic property in the Santa Lucia mountains. And the house was to be situated just right on the hilltop, which was oak shaded, it had many, many oak trees along with other types of trees. It took in that Pacific ocean and, um, the views from on top of the hill took in the Pacific Ocean as well as the nearby seaside community of San Simeon. And we will share another photograph. It's a landscape photograph with oak trees. So the land already had oak trees on it, which were approximately 150 to 200 years old. They had huge trunks. They had thick, twisty branches with massive roots. And William Randolph Hearst came to love those trees. And as construction began here on the hilltop, William Randolph Hearst wanted to preserve the native trees that dotted the site. And he gave instructions that the native coast live oak and the bay trees on the property to be incorporated into the landscape and under no circumstances were live oaks to be cut down or removed. He wanted to preserve the trees. So how did he preserve trees? These trees are huge and heavy and big. And he took his suggestion to architect Julia Morgan and she devised a method for digging the trees out of the ground. And we'll go to our next slide. And we have an oak tree in the center of a concrete circle. So she devised a method for digging the trees out of the ground and then she would have them put into that circular concrete case. And then the mature coast live oak was then rolled to its new home in the ground. So that is very, very heavy, approximately 600 tons. It took a long time, it took weeks to accomplish. And then they would transplant it into its new home. Now, here on the hilltop of San Simeon, we have a variety of different types of oaks. One is called the valley oak, and um, another type that we'll talk about the most is called the coast live oak. And we'll show you another photo showing you their different leaves. The one on the left is the valley oak and you can see its leaves are a little lobed. They have the little lobes that go around it and the other, um, the coast live oak on your right, its leaf shape is a little different. 
The one on the right is an evergreen tree, which means it stays green all year round, provides a lot of shade uh, for the animals and was just a beautiful sight here on the hilltop. So from this location, we're going to take a walk over to Casa del Monte. Casa del Monte has a very old historic tree that we are going to walk over to, learn a little bit about, and then learn a little bit more about acorns while we are there, like in our story. So stay with us as we walk to our next location. We have a beautiful sunny day here in San Simeon. It is winter. It was a little chilly this morning. So most of us have had to uh, layer a few more layers of clothing and hats. in front of Casa del Monte. Casa del Monte is a Spanish name, which means house of the mountain. And toward the end of uh, what, what we are talking about, we will take in those beautiful mountain views um, from the terrace where we are located. What I would like to do is draw your attention to some props that I brought for today's story. and talk a little bit more about the oak tree. So like you have skin on, on your body that helps to uh, protect your bones and all, and all of your insides, an oak tree has bark that goes over it. It's like an armor and it helps protect the inside of the tree. And oak trees are known to be very tough and um, long live, they can live for hundreds of years. And it, a lot of it has to do with its bark and just how it grows. I have a piece of old wood here. This was actually in the ground when I found it and it becomes a home to um, different types of insects. They'll eat on it. Um, and then some people like to use oak for firewood. Now I'm going to show you some acorns. I'm gonna pull those from out of my pocket. So acorns grow in a variety of shapes and sizes. The shape is somewhat consistent, but the size can be different. And I'll come up close so you can see the, those acorns. They're kind of reddish brown in color. They have a cap on the top of the acorn. It's kind of scaly. 
and knobby. And then we have the hole, the outside, which looks like this, the cap. I took the cap off of this one. And inside is the fruit-like net or the seed. This one has, happens to have a couple of seeds in it. Insects, birds, deer, different animals. When they eat an acorn, this is what they're looking for. Is this little fruit-like nut that's on the inside of the acorn. And long ago, the Native Americans who used to live in this area, they would eat those as well. So from the tree, if I take this cap and if I put it on the top of this acorn, imagine if you will, it takes about six to eight months for it to develop on the tree. So what would happen is the cap attaches it to the branch. Whoa, and I'm gonna drop it. it. Takes about six to eight months and then it would drop from the branch into the soil. And then it gets covered with soil and with leaves and with just the right amount of water and sun and if no birds, insects, deer or other animals eat that seed, it will germinate or turn into a small tree which takes a very long time. And then this is the beginning of a new tree. And that may be approximately, hmm, maybe a year, six months to a year old. And that's what it would look like. Now, as mentioned, Mr. Hurst tried to preserve trees here at the hilltop and the tree behind me. In front of Casa del Monte, you can see the width of its, or the diameter of its uh, bark down at the bottom. It's big, thick twisty branches. This tree is approximately over 300 years old. And he did not want to move this tree. So when Julia Morgan was designing the hilltop and designing the cottages, they said, this oak tree needs to live right here in this garden area. And we'll put the house in a certain position so that we can enjoy it from the windows in the house. It's a little windy here today, but there are some birds that are up in the tree. It's fun to listen to them. The bench that I had my props on, people like to sit on that bench and enjoy the views that are out in front of them and enjoy the shade that they get from this tree. Listen to the sounds of the different birds that like to sit in the tree. And then the animals that uh, are in our area, the native animals that like this tree. We have one photo, we're going to uh, photo slide, transition into a photograph, looking for a gray fox and a woodpecker. go through a few of our 
other pictures before getting to this very last slide. On the left is a gray fox. We have gray fox that run around in this area. They like to climb the trees. As you can see, they're climbing an oak tree. They're a beautiful animal. And then the acorn woodpecker on your right hand side, they are actually on a palm tree. And if you look closely at the bark on that palm tree, you will see holes. So woodpeckers will create a hole in a tree, not only on the palms, but also in oak trees. Then they will collect the oaks or the acorns, put them in their beak and then fly them to that hole and collect them until they're ready to eat them. And they may stash them there for winter when acorns cannot be found so easily. So they'll, they'll have their meal in their hole whenever they're ready to eat them. And then we're gonna transition to the Santa Lucia Mountains. Take in the view from the front of Casa del Monte, House of the Mountains. Also dotted and studded with many oak trees that Mr. Hurst loved. The state of California has a variety of oak trees. And even to the state, they try to preserve those oak trees for their beauty, like Mr. Hurst did here on the hilltop. We're grateful that you chose to come to listen to our story today. A Year Around the Great Oak by Gerda Mueller. On behalf of California State Parks, Sports Home Learning Program, my name is Lainey once again, and we're grateful that you joined us today. And until the next story, we we'll look forward to seeing you then. Have a great day.